Well, that's a, I think that's an aberration in that patient. So we mm -hmm. published a paper last year of almost 700 samples. And uh, using PCR testing, if everybody remembers from the pandemic, you could do an antigen test. And if it was equivocal, you'd do a PCR test to back mm -hmm. it up. And so we PCR test all of my samples since 2019 to clarify exactly what is there at the time. Mm. And it's shown that the number one thing is Cutibacterium actus in our series. Number two is Staph epidermidis. Papers have been published showing Staph epidermidis really interacts with the breast tissue, specifically a fatty acid called oleic acid. And that interaction creates a molecule called oxylipin tinhome. Now, that's a lot of fancy stuff. But <laughs> ultimately, what happens is that molecule affects the immune system and can contribute to symptoms mm. like pain, anxiety, fatigue. Um, so when you have this cause-effect type relationship now, um, there's really no reason to – you know, relay to patients like this is not uh, an actual problem because it is. And everybody who places any kind of implant knows it can get infected. So I've helped every surgeon that you can name or think of take care of an implant problem of someone they've cared for. So there, everybody accepts this. It's just I don't feel like we should be uh, like uh, not appreciating the gravity of the of the problem.